Right before I start, I would like to give a shout out to Kelsey Blue Wolf. Kelsey Blue Wolf is the one who suggested this SCP. And Kelsey Blue Wolf is also a writer and an artist. And if you'd like to check out her work, you could click on the Instagram link in the description below. Again, thank you Kelsey Blue Wolf for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. Now, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Special Containment Procedures Containment area is to be kept behind two reverse pressure airlocks. Chemical shower sterilization, full contained atmosphere, hams, mat suits, and 24 hour post interaction quarantine and testing are mandatory for all personnel entering containment area. Should containment be breached, the blast door for the containment and research area will seal and chemical agent ZEER217 11 will be pumped into the air. Any human exposed to SCP-217 are to be contained and held for observation. Any items touched by those affected by SCP-217 must be sterilized. SCP-217 is a virus incurable by current means with a rate of infectivity at 100%. It affects all organisms in the kingdom Animalia and can spread via touch or contact by bodily fluids. SCP-217 is very hardy and can survive for years outside the host body. The progress of the infection is very slow and with some subjects going several years before manifesting any symptoms. SCP-217 alters the biochemistry of organic tissue, causing organic matter to rearrange into a form of organic metal. The processes involved involved with the change are not yet fully understood, but the advanced stage are well documented. A subject will begin to turn into a complex arrangement of gears and clockwork, these taking over from the former biological functions. Advanced stage infections is reported to be very painful, but early stages are often unnoticed and only vague feeling of confusion, insomnia, and joint stiffness. Hearts are replaced by gears and small tubes, joints by gear networks, and eyes by structures not unlike primitive hand-cranked film cameras, etc. SCP-217 shows first on the outside of the body in all creatures except mammals. In mammals, it first converts to interior, internal structures before manifesting outside the body. This can cause those infected to go for very long periods of time without knowing of the infection. SCP-217 has even been shown to totally convert the inside of the body before showing any external visible symptoms. SCP-217 has infected several major metropolitan areas in the past, most notably the middle state of those in the middle to advanced stages of infection has been shown to be much diminished. Subjects respond in a repetitive fashion, are very dull and mechanical in action, are easily distracted and confused, and appear generally irritable when faced with new problems. In addition, research on a fully converted brain has Subjects infected by SCP-217 have, at early stages, reported no major symptoms, aside from increasing lethargy and a general lack of emotional response. Some have reported a feeling of fluttering or moving under the skin, coupled with a persistent ticking noise. This noise seems most predominant when SCP-217 infects the shoulders, neck, and head. However, it is inaudible if recording equipment is pressed against an affected area. Initial infections of SCP-217 is, as has been already stated, almost undetectable. As the infection advances, subjects will begin to feel sharp, tearing pain in areas being converted. 
It has been compared to a knife wound or a deep muscle tear and can persist for hours or several days, depending on both the subject and the area infected. The new clockwork organs appear to tear and rip at tissue for a short time before fully becoming integrated and settling into the surrounding tissue, and this is believed to account for the pain. Areas infected appear to be metal, mainly brass, steel, and iron. Other substances have been reported, appearing to be leather, rubber, glass, wood, and other basic materials. Despite appearances, it is purely organic material and even carries the subject's DNA. Organs and tissues affected appear more resilient than normal, carrying the same strength and density as the materials they resemble instead of normal tissue density. Areas damage repair over time, but is much slower than that of a standard human regeneration. Damaged areas can be instantly repaired by replacing damaged areas with new parts of the same type. Testing has been shown that there are no ill effects in parts made from normal materials such as steel, wood, leather and can replace the existing biomechanical clockworks. Most alarming is that people infected with SCP-217 can continue for months even years without being detected. With infection so easily to spread, hundreds could be infected before proper containment could be enforced. Infections appear to spread most quickly in large offices, malls, and other large concentrations of people. Note: Anyone or anything suspected or confirmed to be infected with SCP-217 is not to be allowed near SCP-882. At the time, cross-experimentation between SCP-229 and SCP-217 is allowed only with O5 approval.